I have been working as a full-time solo game developer for the last three months, ever since I was laid off from my last job. Since then, I've been developing this top-down action roguelike game, which I would describe as somewhat of a blend between Hades and Binding of the Isaac. I would really appreciate it if you could wishlist it on Steam. Thanks. So, you want to develop a game all by yourself? Stop it. Get some help. I mean, seriously, even finding just one other person to collaborate with can significantly help you in terms of bouncing ideas, uh, validating concepts, reducing workload, and boosting motivation. But I know it can be hard to find people with similar interests. Sometimes it just doesn't work out. So let me share a few tips that I figured out in my journey that should help you as well. If you are just starting out and hoping to make the next indie hit, then you might get disappointed. Instead, you need to familiarize yourself with your tool sets and gain that initial bit of experience. I would advise that you start with very small scale games like Flappy Bird or a platformer or something that you can finish within two weeks. Try not to use any asset packs or anything. The goal should be to learn and level up your skills for the game engine, programming and a bit of art, either 2D or 3D. Now, if you are not a complete beginner and you have already made some projects, then I would advise you to start working towards that first commercial release. Since the experience you will get by doing so will be a lot more as you would be focusing on these other important things which go into making a complete game, and you should also probably look into what other indie game developers are making through devlogs, reddit posts, and so on. It can be a great source of inspiration and a research point as to what you should be aiming for. But know this, what they are highlighting is their best. Some of them have been working for a lot longer than us, and a lot of them are veterans from game studios. So they already have a lot of experience in at least one aspect of game development. You shouldn't compare your games to theirs or expect to make games like that right off the bat. My advice to you would be to thoroughly understand your strengths and limitations and then decide on the scope of the game accordingly. This approach will really help you finish a game faster. Speaking of which, scope is how much time and resources it will take you to implement features for your game. There is one thing that will heavily influence the scope of your game, and that is the genre of the game you decide. This is due to the expectations players have with a genre. For example, action roguelike games need to have a variety of player builds, and metroidvanias need to have multiple interconnected areas, bosses, and so on. Obviously, you could scale it down, removing bits here and there, but you will still have to provide the essentials expected in your game. So if you're just starting out, I would advise picking a small scope genre like horror games or adventure walking simulator games, but also make sure to pick a genre that you would enjoy making since it's you who will have to spend all the time developing it. And if you don't feel strongly about it now, you will have a harder time convincing yourself in the future. That's partly the reason why I am developing a roguelike, although scope is getting a bit tricky to handle. So definitely note down the features that your game must have and what you want to add and come up with a time frame. And then just double that. It's especially true in my case. I was thinking I would be ready with the initial demo within two months. Uh, and it's already been three months and I think by next month I should be ready for initial playtesting. By the way, if you would like to be notified when I do playtesting, feel free to join my Discord server. Okay, next tip. You need to know and follow the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the results or outcomes depend on 20% of the work. This is going to be super useful for us solo game devs since we don't have the time and resources to focus on everything. This rule can be applied to almost any aspect of game development be it managing your time by focusing on essential features of your game, be it art direction, by focusing more on color and lighting that can give something visually appealing really fast. But this rule does not mean that you just need to do 20% of the work and say you applied this rule. Instead, you need to figure out which 20% of tasks or efforts will yield maximum results if you focus on them. For example, melee attacks are the main focus of my game. So I identified and added all these small tweaks, 
which really makes the combat feel polished and fun. So use this rule to prioritize important aspects of your game and it will save you tons of time. Another thing I would like to add is don't hesitate to outsource certain aspects of the game like getting some assets, be it visual, or tools to help in development where you are not confident. Solo development doesn't mean you have to do everything and it will save you tons of time and frustration in the long run. Yes, visuals really matter. Visuals are often the first thing players notice about a game. A well-crafted art style can really captivate players and draw them toward your game. Now, before you go on to say, I am not an artist. I can't draw or make beautiful scenes. I'd say, you don't have to be. You just need to be consistent with your art direction to never break that sense of immersion. And if you have a 3D game, decide the art style of the game based on the theme and keep it consistent, whether it's low poly or stylized or realistic or retro, it needs to be that way throughout the game. One easy way to ensure a consistent art style is to use custom shaders like Toon Shader. It also adds that polished look really fast. Remember the 80-20 rule. Or if you're using assets for the art, simply use assets from the same or similar publisher. Alternatively, ensure that the poly counts are similar across different assets and modify textures to create a sense of cohesion in the visual style. Next tip is, you need to efficiently plan for both the prototyping and development phase and know when to switch between these two. During the prototyping phase, you'll test various elements to see if they yield desired results. This phase can be time consuming as you search for optimal solutions, such as determining if a mechanic suits the game or if a particular style complements the gameplay. It's an exciting and rewarding phase as you learn and witness results. However, during the production phase, you probably won't be doing anything new which can become monotonous, but it needs to be done in order to complete the game. So, you need to watch out for this and make a proper plan and schedule to keep things on track. There's an incredibly helpful video on how to plan for these two phases by Heartbeast. I recommend checking it out after this. Next tip is... We generally start off very motivated when beginning a new project. It feels exciting to see results quickly, but to over time the progress can slow down and you probably won't have that initial level of motivation. How do you handle it then? While I am not going to say I have fully figured it out, but what works for me most of the time is simply opening Unity every day and trying to implement something for the next 20 minutes. And usually that turns into a few hours. Even if I don't implement something, I try to play my game and identify areas for improvement. Or this happens anyway. What also works sometimes is remembering my goals I set out initially. So I would advise you to write down your goal for the game. These could be related to earning money or simply completing the game and sharing it with your friends, among other things. And when you're not feeling it, remind yourself of these goals and imagine the sense of accomplishment you'll experience once you achieve them. This should hopefully refuel your interest. Additionally, using a Trello board to list tasks for the future should allow you to start working on them promptly and stay organized throughout the development process. But make sure you are also taking breaks from development and avoid getting burned out quickly. Once you've navigated through all the hurdles and you have something to show for your game, then it's time to face the final boss. Marketing is hard. You need to convince people your game is worth their time, and you need to do it within a few seconds, since otherwise people might move on to the next. It won't matter how many features or how much time and effort you put into it. This is where having a unique hook to your game really helps, since your game can stand out more easily and it can be a lot easier to market. Anyway, I would strongly suggest validating your game early on by posting it somewhere, or if your game relies too heavily on mechanics, preparing a prototype. This approach not only helps you gather early feedback, but also should set the right expectations for your game. So you have posted about the game and it doesn't go that well. What do you do then? That's the kind of position I feel I'm in. I've been posting about my game, but so far I haven't been that successful with it. Although I'm not heavily marketing it, I'm focusing on learning how to market it better. 
but yeah, it hasn't been that great so far. So I am planning on putting the best things that my game has to offer and putting it to the test by giving it to you guys through play tests and eventually a demo to other YouTubers and streamers to really decide how I want to proceed forward and set the right expectation with this game. This might all seem negative, but it's not all that bad. You don't need your game to be a mega hit to consider it a success. My advice would be to constantly validate your expectations and your goals with the game. If you don't see expectations being met, consider scaling down the game, but focus on polishing the added content extensively. Ultimately, players want to have a fun time with the game. If you can provide that, sales should follow. There are also some really great talks by Chris that offer valuable insights into Steam marketing. I highly recommend it. Anyway, I am still learning about many things game dev related, and I feel I am not credible enough to give more tips since I haven't released any game yet, but I believe these tips should help you as it has helped me so far, and I will be sharing my ongoing learning journey with all of you. So feel free to subscribe, like, and share this video if you found it helpful. Now I'd love to hear your thoughts on whether you agree with these tips, or if you have any additional tips, please share them with everyone in the comments below. Thanks for watching.